My goal in this brief introduction of what is going to be a two-part um, message is to communicate a simple yet profound truth that if you embrace it, it will change the operating system of your life. And so I, what I'm going to say in this introduction and the next message is extremely important it will change the very way you do life moving forward. That's how impactful it will be. So let me, um, let me take you to Daniel chapter 1, the Old Testament book of Daniel. And we're going to look at the first eight verses there. Daniel chapter 1, beginning with verse 8. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any De physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. The single sister say, and that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> he was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter the king's service. Skip down to the last verse in the interest of time of verse 8, last sentence of verse 8. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. Daniel resolved not to defile himself. I want to talk to you about the power of living by resolve. Power of living by resolve. This passage and many others in scripture teach us the importance of living by our decisions rather than our conditions. So many of us are used to living life according to our conditions. What's happening around us regulates how we live and what we do. The decisions we make is all based on our conditions. But I want to let you know, if you want to live at the level God has ordained for you, you've got to learn to live, as Daniel shows us in this passage, by your decisions rather than your conditions. Conditions are always going to be around. They are always going to be among us, and many of our conditions are negative. It's called living on earth. That's all it is. Living on planet earth. This is not utopia. This is not somewhere where everything's going to be great. I, I don't like it when, when I hear these Christians that are oriented toward prosperity and all, always talking about blessings, always talking about happiness. I'm never uh, under, always over, and this and that and the other. Listen, don't don't mislead people. In this life, you're going to have trouble. In this life, you're going to have challenges. In this life, you're going to have things you have to deal with that are not pleasant. And it has nothing to do with your level of faith. You can be strong in faith, mighty in, in prayer, all that. But you're going to go through some hell sometime. And not only hell, you're going to have disappointments. You're going to have things that make you cry. You're going to have things that happen in life that just don't even make sense, that perplex you. And you've got to learn that, that you can't determine how close you are to God by how smooth life is. I'm going to preach for these next 10 and a half minutes. You just got to learn how to trust God, not only in the good times, you got to learn to trust him in the difficult times. In fact, you wouldn't need faith if it wasn't for troubled times. If you could walk by sight because God's blessed you so you're never going to have trouble, what's the point of having faith? But you got to have faith because we walk not by sight. We got to walk by faith because faith takes us through the tough times. 
True biblical faith is built for tough times. True biblical faith is built to get you through something that you would not otherwise get through. And so we must learn that we cannot afford to live by our uh, conditions. Conditions are always going to change. Sometimes you're going to wake up, oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I have a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. That's one of the musicals we had when we were kids in, in, in school. And uh, all that, some days you're going to wake up singing that, but other days you're going to wake up like Billy Holiday. Good morning, heartache. Come on, somebody. Some days you're going to wake up, there's nothing to be thrilled about in your circumstances, in your conditions. There is nothing to be thrilled about. Yes, praise God when the kids are acting good and, and they're getting good grades and all that. But you're going to have to have faith and you're going to have to have resolve when the kids are flunking out like they are stupid. And you know they're not. They just haven't spent any time studying because they're online and doing everything else that they're doing. And you're going to have to get through those kinds of times. You're going to always have something challenging to deal with from time to time. I'm so grateful for the times of sunshine and, and all of that. Enjoy them, milk them, enjoy, maximize it because there's coming another time. When the skies won't be so blue and crystal clear, there'll be another time like you've been out there today with this rain and wind and carrying on. You're going to have to learn how to walk steady with God. And the way you do that is you live by resolve, meaning you live by your decisions, not by your conditions. Daniel's conditions at this point in his life were nothing to write home about. When you read Daniel chapter 1, you're reading about Daniel and the people of Israel have been taken captive by pagans. They are not at home in Jerusalem because the pagans came, besieged the city, and took them as captives to Babylon. God's people in captivity. Right in your Bible, you are not going to be have. You're not going to be able to say, "Well, they didn't have enough faith." Had nothing to do with faith. God, in fact, I don't know if you noticed it, but it said the Lord delivered them into the captive's hands. What? God telling the captives, "Yeah, y'all go ahead and take my kids." You know why? Because our God will not reward people who disobey. God will not let you receive blessings that were, were a destined for obedient, submissive children and bestow them on you even though you're not doing right. See, that's the kind of parenting that our parents, they learn their parents from, they, they learn their parenting from God. So we baby boomers who were raised by the silent generation and the greatest generation, they didn't play. They were not going to reward you because, um, just because you were cute. Come on, I need y'all to help real quick. They're not going to record you just because you're cute. You know, some folk just, oh, my baby's so cute. And when they acting bad, oh, I don't know what to do with this child. What you talking about you don't know what to do with this child? Bring him to me for five minutes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not going to get your kid like that. Don't, don't be scared of the pastor. I'm just making the point. That's the way the people who raised us said, honey, if he was mine for five minutes. <laughs> Why? Because we were raised by folk who meant what they said. Here's what you're supposed to do. So you didn't come to them in late November, early December with a list. And you haven't been putting out the trash and that was one of your chores. You haven't been cleaning the house. You haven't been doing. We had chore lists back then. They would put it on the, on the refrigerator with a magnet. Oh, I need somebody to help me here. On the refrigerator with a magnet. Bam, that's what you, and it had my name, Paul, and then and I, Gwen, Horace, Patty. Kenny was 10 years later. I don't know if he ever even got the list, but 
Uh, you had to ask him whether he got it. But we had the first four of us, we had a list. And that's what you had to do. And no need to come in and talking about your friends are going out uh, for a special something Saturday and you're going to be out all day. And, and can, I, can I go? They said, well, have you done your chores for the week? That's what they want to know. Have you done your chores for the week? Well, I see, I, see, I had homework. I know that homework, that's what you do for school. Chores are what you do for here. Did you do them both? <laughs> oh, come on. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. That was the parenting that we were raised with. And if we hadn't done it, she said, well, you better stay up late Friday night and getting it done because you're not leaving this house Saturday morning with your chores undone. And so I'm up late at night or get up real early Saturday. That's why, that's why I had my 45s. Y'all don't know anything, but young folk don't know anything about 45s. Come on, old people. I had my stack of 45s, and I would go in. If I had to clean the living room that day, I would take Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 in there with me, and I would play that while I'm, and, you know, we couldn't clean, just, just pick up a few pieces of paper and all that time I'm done. No, when they said I had to clean the living room, I remember that 180 East Walnut Lane. I can picture it now. It was a wood floor. You had to clean a wood floor. It had wood uh, of, um, around the sides, and uh, you had to get, and then all the furniture, you had to get lemon pledge. <laughs> oh, see, y'all don't know nothing about no pledge. Lemon pledge, thank you for my help. Lemon pledge, and you spray it, and you wipe and you make sure everything is dusted off. There better not be a fingerprint on them thing. And so we had this, uh, part of what I had to clean was this stereo, it was a big console back in the days. Y'all see, you hear them 60s people? A console back in the day. And it has some, they were built different ways. Some people had a TV in the center of their console. Other people had uh, drawers and stuff, but on the side were speakers because they had their record player, their turntable in the center. That's the way we had ours. A record player, and it was a center, and two, it sound real nice, two good speakers on the side, and what have you. In the record player, you just put your stack of 45s or, or long LPs, but you, with, 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 when I was cleaning, trying to go out with my friends, you put, I put a stack, about three Jacks, Jackson 5 on there. And, and the way it would work, young folk, y'all never saw anything like this. You, you, <laughs> you push, when y'all see a turntable, y'all think, <laughs> That's the only thing y'all think. We didn't scratch. We was playing Jackson 5 and Smokey Robinson and all them people was with us. And so when I, if I got clean the room, that's going to take three, three Jacksons to clean this room. So I would start out uh, <laughs> with I want you back. So it would drop in. So the, the thing would drop it down and the handle would, and the thing would come on over. To, it knew it was a 45 because you told it was a 45, not a 33. So it would come to the right thing, then it would drop down, and you would hear, you would hear him say, I want you back. And then when she got, got through with that, then the next one drop on down. And it would be A, B, C. That's the easiest one, two, three. And I'm still cleaning and what have you. And then after that, the last one would come. I'm near the end of cleaning the thing and drop on down. Stop the love you say may be your own. Darling, take it slow, or someday you'll be all alone. Oh, Michael and them could preach back in the day. What you talking about? They didn't reward you for disobedience. You got to learn to do God's will no matter how you feel. No matter what the conditions are around you. You got to learn to do his will. His will is the most important thing. And when they didn't do his will, God said, I'm going to invite your enemies to show you what happens when, when you disobey your God. Took them off, not for days, weeks, or months. Took them off for years because of their disobedience. And God said, I want you all to learn I'm serious when I'm telling you what I want you to do. But Daniel said, although we are going, we are now living, we're captives in a land we don't want to be in. We are where we'd rather not be. That's conditions. Often our lives are like that. Some of y'all work on a job you'd rather not have to go to tomorrow. Some of y'all live in a neighborhood you'd rather not uh, live in. Some of y'all have all kinds of shit. You got a family. You'd rather not deal with their craziness. 
but you got to deal with what you got to deal. Those are conditions. They are always a present in life. But resolve will teach you to live by decisions and not by conditions. Tell you more about them next week.